Hey, hey, hey. I'm going to stand by what I said before. We don't need the birth episodes. We just don't. I mean, I'm glad that that was not the whole focus of this one, but like, it, it's all good if we don't get them. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Cozy. I like to talk about sister wives and related reality television shows here on YouTube. I do like to remind you these videos are for entertainment purposes only. These are not facts. They are just my opinions about public figures sharing their lives on television. So if we're cool, we're cool. Guys, <laughs> before we hop into the episode, I found out something today and I don't know how I feel about it. So obviously shaved head from my surgery, right? I found out today that on the side of my head, some of my hair is growing back white. Like white. I'm 35. And it's white. I don't know what I'm gonna do about it. I just wanted to share that I thought it was weird that some of my hair is growing back white. At any rate, so this episode definitely had some great moments, right? And it spilled some tea. We got some little tidbits, especially in the beginning, talking about the wedding. And of course, they're going to pretend that this is just some family friend that they're going to, that they all got invited. It's not. We all are aware, right? I'm assuming we're all aware that, that this is Logan's wedding. And of course, we know Logan and Michelle are not interested in being public. So it's perfectly fine to play along with that for a little while. We can play pretend. I'm cool with that. Because if this is how you respect your son's wishes, then great. I'm glad you're willing to do that. Christine says, listen, the family, want, they, they want nothing to do with the fact that the family's public. I don't blame them. Right now, all eyes are on this divided family talking about the drama, kind of like I'm doing right now. So this is a self-criticism. But... I can understand why you wouldn't necessarily want that out for the whole world, right? So we're a minute in, and Christine says that she was told by the bride that Cody's not going to go, and neither is Robin, and it's very up in the air whether or not they're going to be there. And I was willing to play along with the show for a little bit, but like how selfish do you have to be to pretend you're not going to go to your own son's wedding because you think that everyone is going to be so upset to see you there. That's pretty self-centered, in my opinion. Not a single person wants to start a fight with you and ruin this day for the couple, for the rest of the family, for anyone else. So Christine says the goal is to be friendly, not friends, which is basically the same thing she said about the baby sprinkle. And so she says she's so nervous to have everybody all together. And I was thinking about it because... Depending on what order this all happened in, whether the baby sprinkle happened first or the wedding happened first, you've already been with them, at least with your smaller portion of the family. And I can understand not knowing what's going to happen with the family at large all being together again and having some nerves. But Christine, your relationship with Cody is the most contentious one. And you have a fairly decent idea in the timeline we're shown of how that would go. Cody wants to defend himself and he tells us that he spoke with the couple and said maybe he shouldn't go. And his reasoning that he gives is all the hate that he's getting from the family. I don't see hate. If I'm being honest, I don't see hate. I see criticism. And I think he's honestly equating that to hate. Because really honestly, the most hateful behaviors we see, it comes from Cody, if I'm being honest, toward everyone else. And even then, it's rude, it's ugly, it's unacceptable, and it's uncalled for. But is it hate? I don't know if it's hate. Anger for sure, but I don't know if it's hate. Um, but he makes sure to let us know that he's talking about the crap talk from Janelle and Christine. Once again, criticism, not necessarily hate. Uh, so he uses his favorite word when discussing Janelle, and we all know what that is because it's culpable. We're all culpable in this, he says. And yes, that's probably true. I'm sure everyone has a role to play. I, at least other people seem to be trying to take accountability for some of the moments that they could have been better. Uh, not every moment, but at least several of them. So instead of continuing down this line of thought, he explains what he's doing in the footage, which is measuring things at Coyote Pass because he's looking to find the best configuration. He doesn't know the answer. He doesn't think that Janelle and Mary are ever gonna end up on Coyote's path, Coyote Pass, and it's a source of heartbreak for Cody, he says. And the way he said that kind of set my spidey senses tingling, because I still am worried he's gonna find a way to keep them away from the land their name is on. The way he said, 
I don't think they're ever coming out here. It just made me think, mm, that doesn't sound great. Robin is raking the fake grass out back in her fancy pink coat. I don't know why that's weird to me. I live in the Midwest. Leaves fall here on AstroTurf at football stadiums, so I don't know why I would think that's weird. You obviously would have to rake them or blow them or clean them up somehow. She explains that she and Cody were specifically asked to come to this wedding, and of course you were. It's not a distant friend. It's not a distant relative. Once again, I give them props for respecting the couple's wishes because I want to try and do that too, but I... It, you gotta clarify, it is Logan's wedding they're discussing, and obviously they would be expected to be there. <laughs> she says that things are tense and she's concerned about Saul and Ari. I can understand that concern. Those two are young and they can't make choices for their parents, but they're not infants and they, at least Saul, definitely has an idea of what's going on. Cody shares that he doesn't want to be there with people looking at him and not talking to him. Once again, very selfish. I'm going to call out that selfishness because it's not about you. If someone doesn't talk to you at this wedding, someone else will. You don't need to sulk and play the victim and, oh, I'm just not going to go. What do you think he's going to do? Turn around and uninvite the rest of the family for you? I, I, he, he keeps going, I'm not in this place. And that foolishness needs to stop. I don't care what place you're in. You're acting ridiculous right now, Cody. So Christine reflects on how different the family was at the last wedding four years previous, and that was Aspen and Mitch getting married just a few weeks before the family up and moved to Flagstaff. And Christine recalls that day being great, and she and Cody were in a great place. And she says back then she never even considered leaving, which she has said a little differently in interviews in the past, claiming that she was considering it as far back as Vegas, like Janelle knew that far back. Robin's like, that was back when we were all a team. And she's like, it's so painful to remember where we were back then. I don't know if you really were as big a team then as you feel like you were, but you definitely weren't by the time you got to Arizona. Robin's like, I'm not even sure what's real anymore. Meaning she doesn't know whether or not the interactions that they used to have were real or if everybody was seething under the surface. Cody's like, that was our last hurrah. He, he recalls the wedding being wonderful and the relationship between him and Christine was great. So they both agree that their relationship was pretty good at that point. And Christine says, this is not the same family that was at Aspen's wedding, McKelty's, Maddie's. The family is vastly different now. She's not wrong. She also explains that McKelty will not be in attendance because she was put on, quote, extreme bed rest. I'm not sure what extreme bed rest is, but I'm assuming... You lay down, you don't go anywhere. I never got put on bed rest with my kids, so I'm not sure. Um, but McKelty's only, McKelty's only got a couple more weeks to go. And for Christine, that's actually kind of hard because McKelty's been this bridge between Robin and Cody and everyone else. Um, she's kind of been this, this great mediator for everyone. She can sort of go between and make sure that everything is good. So having, not having her at that wedding is going to make things a little bit more difficult. Um... Janelle admits that she is really nervous for the initial interaction, but past that, she doesn't care. It really seems like she doesn't intend to interact for there to be a secondary interaction anywhere in there. And Cody says that things between he and Christine are just hostile. I don't know that Cody understands the role he plays in that. Not excusing any hostility on Christine's part, but Cody definitely shows more of the aggression, and we really haven't seen Christine be openly hostile on the show. In Vegas, we get some self-filmed moments of Janelle sharing a little bit about how the wedding's going, how the preparations are going. And on the couch, Janelle says that her kids are upset with Cody and no one wants a scene. And I understand that. They might be upset, but this is bigger than them. She says the plan is ignore each other and pretend they don't exist. Probably for the best. And we know that that's Cody's greatest fear because he told us he didn't want anybody looking at him and not talking to him. I actually think he wants some sort of blow up yelling screaming match because that would suit his dramatic side more than just calm simple hi how you doing I'm gonna go over here now so Robin says the kids don't need to be involved in the parents issues the problem is the kids have their own issues that have gone unaddressed because it's easier to blame Christine and Janelle than to say hey what's wrong I'm sorry I messed up Christine says that the last time all four of the adults were together, four, ma'am, four, then clarifies it was Isabel's graduation party 
And if I recall, Mary was unable to be at that party. So four. Uh, Christine goes on to say that they say a lot of things behind each other's backs. And she's like, listen, it's terrible to hear what everybody says behind your back. She she's t she hates hearing what everybody thinks of her. And I understand that because, frankly, I would much rather not know unless I absolutely have to. There better be a very good reason for you to tell me what somebody said about me. So we get the black screen with the white writing that says cameras were not permitted at the event. Of course they were. They've told us like 86 times now that... These folks do not want to be public. They don't want to be involved in that. And that is fine. So Janelle goes on to explain how the day went in her eyes. And I find some of it a little con confusing because we have seen pictures of the day. She says she sat with Christine, but in the photos, Christine is behind her. And she says she saw and nodded to Mary and they didn't really talk. But once again, in pictures, Mary's seated next to her. Now, she could have entirely meant at the reception, but... It does seem a little over-dramatized. Um, Mary says the wedding was a little awkward because there are some family members who prefer not to interact with her. Plus, she's in the middle of this breakup with Cody and Robin. <laughs> she says, at the same time, there are plenty of people who are okay with her, and so she just hangs out with them. Janelle says that Cody said hi to her a couple times in passing, and she says it's okay, it's just weird after 30 years that this is what we've been reduced to. And she knows they both said mean things about each other, trying to prove or justify their point, just for how they feel the way that they do. That's probably true, and I'm glad that she can acknowledge that. But Cody's all sad sack when he says that he and Robin were put over in the corner. And then he laughs and says, <laughs> probably for our safety. Now, it's ridiculous. In the photographs of the, the ceremony, he is sitting with several of the kids at the ceremony. He is interacting with different people. If you were in the corner, it's not because you were unsafe. Uh, if, if your seat was in the corner, it was because it was in the corner. He it, It's a stupid joke at a stupid time. Cody says that Robin kept saying, this isn't right. The family isn't together. We should be one family. <sighs> I would believe she did say that because she says that all the time in the show, but it just sort of is what it is at this point. Um, Robin said some of the family members hugged her and she hugged them back and Gabe said that he loved her and she gave him an I love you back. Cody says he saw Janelle, but he didn't talk to her and uh, he he's just decided to treat her the same as Christine from what it sounds like. And he says it was hard and whether he is right or wrong, so it doesn't matter if he's wrong, clearly. The betrayal runs deep for him. Okay. <laughs> he shares it with so many family members. It felt like, hi, I love you. Let's get away from each other. And maybe that's how it has to be for right now. Maybe people just need space. He says he inserted, inserted himself into the fun as best he could. And Cody, just have fun. Stop worrying about everyone else and just have fun. Janelle felt it was so weird to be at this event and act like they didn't even know each other. And I can imagine that would be very strange. You guys knew each other very well for a very long time. Cody says he saw Christine and didn't talk to her, unsurprisingly. He also felt like people were trying to look like they were having more fun than he was. And Cody, I think very genuinely, they were just having fun. No one was worried about looking like they were having fun because they were just enjoying each other's company, enjoying the time together, enjoying the festivities around them. And you're so worried about whether or not you look like you're having enough fun. You are missing out on all of the fun around you. And then he says, this divorce has, this is how childish this divorce has been. And goes on to say, I don't like them any more than they like me. That's a tough thing to hear because does he mean just the wives or does he mean the kids too? Because that's not nice to say about your children if that's what you meant. He claims the family is in total civil war and they, I don't know if they're in total civil war, but they definitely have their issues to work out. Robin felt like there could have been more positive reaction interactions there. And I think she was right with reaction initially. She really wanted people to react favorably to them being there. And when some simply chose to ignore, I think it definitely stung. It doesn't sound like the interactions were particularly negative. She just simply wanted more of them. Well, you get what you give. And it sounds like there's been very little interaction leading up to this. So Janelle calls the time together bittersweet. And it does bug her a little bit that 
this is how things have crumbled. But overall, she's excited about the trajectory of her life and just needs some time to process. Cody felt the wedding overall was sad for him. I bet it was. He remembers going places as a family and his previous partners are now more like enemies. It's awkward, he says. And that is definitely the word of the episode. Everything is awkward. Every time they're turning around, something is awkward. And for her part, Christine doesn't know what the solution is and admits that separations and divorces are a lot harder than she thought. And I do think she had a very Pollyanna view of what this divorce would mean for the entire family. I think that if everyone wanted to be together, that they would try to make it work a little bit more. But Christine's idea that I can just leave and we're all going to be able to be friends and be together and have an easy time. I think it was a little bit too optimistic for the circumstances. Cody reminds us that Christine moved his stuff out and said she didn't want him to stay there anymore. And it felt like a betrayal. And he didn't think she was serious. Looking back, he does think it was stupid. Um, and had they broken up as friends, which is what Christine wanted in the first place, it would have been better for the whole family. And now he's using her season 17 talking points of making sure they can get back together as a family against her. It's like watching a debate between two politicians where one did not pre prepare and simply steals the talking points of the other, but tweaks them just slightly. You know what I'm talking about. After the break, we're back in Flagstaff at the she Chateau, and Cody says he thinks he and Mary have officially broken up. Was the clue that she broke up with Robin and then asked for a release from the church? Because that's a pretty decent hint, in my opinion. He says if they were both single, he would not date her. He knows that she's upset that he dragged it out so long, and he claims not to blame her, except that he constantly blames her at every single turn for not recognizing that it was over. He calls the quagmire he's in a triple breakup, and he said he uh, doesn't want Mary to go in the direction of Janelle and Christine and hating him. Oh yeah, I need one more enemy right now, he tells us. So he's trying to force, I mean, be in this place of friendship with Mary, you know, where he's asking her, can we please be friends now and move on? Okay. He does admit that he and Janelle don't communicate much, but he also doesn't get why they can't reconcile. And Janelle has been very clear about this, but also... If you're not communicating with her, how are you intending to reconcile? Just think it and therefore it is? I'm not sure. Um, Janelle shares when they moved to Flagstaff that Cody found it way easier just to be away. And from an outsider perspective, it certainly seemed like the distance between the homes facilitated that ability. She said she would have to remind him that he needed to be at her house. And his excuse was, I'm tired. And I agree with Janelle. You can rest just as easily at Janelle's house as you can at Robin's. And that is exactly what she said. And in my permit, in my opinion, probably more so. Because Janelle doesn't have small children running around at home. So to be able to just kind of kick back, take a rest, take a relaxation, would probably be easier at the quieter home. She points out that it became more separate with more and more reasons to be separate all the time. So we actually head into Robin's house for game night. And here comes Robin with this tray of caramel apples and a game of Jenga on the floor. But we're playing on the rug. So we need a nice thick book to set the game up on. Otherwise it's going to fall over. Is the table too messy to play on? Do we just need to feature the room in the basement? There, it doesn't appear to be a table in that room. Um, Robin brings down this tray and I have seen other people say it is silver. Guys, I swear it's glass. When you look at it, you can look through it and see the parchment paper. Am I crazy? Someone in the comments tell me if I'm nuts. Because I rewatched it and I was like, no, I can see the parchment paper through the glass. I think I'm going insane. Someone tell me if I'm nuts. I definitely had silver handles. I will give everyone credit on that one. But even when I watched the first time, my husband said, is that a silver tray? And I said, no, that's definitely glass. So someone tell me if I'm insane, please. <laughs> Also, who gets caramel apples to play a game of Jenga on the floor? Those are, you need clean hands for Jenga. And you also, how do you get, how do you get caramel out of carpet fiber? Like somebody is bound to drop something and now caramel is in your carpet fibers. I just, maybe I'm just weird and don't want to scrub my carpets like that. I don't know. Robin lets us know that more relationships are struggling now, and she's tried to reach out to other family members to see who wants to talk, but no one's answered back. That's probably not great. 
She guesses that they're just not ready. Sure, that could very well be the case, or they're just not interested, or your number is blocked, or any number of things. Cody shares that Janelle told him that she's enjoying her time away from him. And I, I bet that's probably true. She has the freedom to do a lot more things than what she had if she had to sit around waiting for every third, fourth, twelfth night for Cody to show up. Robin's angry at everyone for doing what they did to their family. I'm assuming including herself. Um, she says that they, she feels like they messed with something that was working, but working for who? Because it doesn't sound like it was working for anybody but Robin, in my opinion. The other ladies have been super clear that they felt like things were not working for a very long time. And I know that that would suck to hear. I know it would suck to come to terms with, but she is living in this fantasy land if she is choosing to continue ignoring that the other ladies have said this wasn't working. But the game night also doesn't feel real because the smiles just don't feel entirely genuine and Cody doesn't seem to know how to play this. Robin keeps side-eyeing the cameras every so often, almost in like a, did you get that? Did you see that? Kind of way. And Cody says his day-to-day -day life is having a family in the house with his wife, Robin, and they have this experience. And he tries to come up with something, and it, it sort of sounds like he's grasping at straws a little bit. He says in the summer they play and the girls do music all summer long. They have these game nights, like right now, but usually with guitars and music. Okay, so you don't have game night, you have family sing-alongs, right? And if you do, that's fine. I'm not, I don't, we don't have game night necessarily. We actually kind of do family movie night. Sometimes we try to play games. Um, not all of our kids are on the same level as far as what kind of games are appropriate to play. And so our oldest doesn't always want to play stuff that the youngest two can play. You know how that goes? But he says that they have this nice family experience almost perpetually. Almost in a way that never ends or changes. I mean, okay, fine. It's sort of a word that you can use there. It doesn't feel right when you hear it. I know that these two are synonyms, but constantly feels better there as opposed to perpetually. You know what I mean? The Jenga games are short-lived because the tower just keeps falling over and every time it falls over everyone seems just way too excited and way too happy and it just doesn't feel real. And maybe that is the fault of reality television honestly because maybe it just feels like a forced moment for the show. Maybe I'm misreading the vibes. I'm not sure. Cody makes this weird bet with Ari that if she doesn't knock the tower over, he won't have any more caramelled apples, as he calls them. His words. That's what he calls them. Um, I paused <laughs> for a second to type something down and paused on maybe the greatest, what would have been the greatest screenshot ever if Max would let me take screenshots. And since it doesn't, I took a picture of my phone with my tablet because just the look on everybody's face. I may make that the thumbnail of the video. You guys are going to tear me apart in the comments because it's not a great picture of Robin. But I'm thinking about it. Um, Robin questions why he would make that deal. And he says, because I'm betting. I don't think she can get through this one. I, What? Uh, Ari does manage to pull it loose and not even a wobble of the tower. And Robin's pushing. Why did you bet that? And Cody's like, I didn't think she could do it. The whole interaction just feels weird. Like, Okay, he made a weird bet. You're right. It is a weird bet. And it the whole thing just seems off. I don't know how to explain it. It just feels weird. Robin tells us that Solomon and Ariella are not tracking what's happening in this family, which is probably for the best, honestly. Especially Ari. She is way too little and she really doesn't need to be kind of down to the minutia of what's going on. She continues on telling us that COVID really prepped them for this separation that's happening. And she doesn't know whether she should talk to them about their siblings and remind them. Should she show them pictures? She knows the kids are going to have questions like, where are my siblings? Why aren't they seeing me? Um, you know, I would follow that logic more. But Saul is barely younger than Truly. And so he would definitely be very aware of his other brothers and sisters. Ari, being the youngest, being significantly more insulated because of how young she was when COVID was happening, maybe would not have quite as many memories. Um, she says that they might ask, why didn't they send me a birthday card? Why aren't they at my party? And this is starting to feel to me like these are questions that have already been asked. Like the kids are asking her, where are they? Why aren't they here for these important events? And Robin says, you know, 
sometimes they ask if the whole family's coming and she has to tell them not this time. It feels like Robin doesn't really have a good answer to the questions of where are they, why aren't they here, at least not one she's willing to give us. Um, I think the best answer would be, unfortunately, guys, they're just not able to come right now. I know that they care about you and we'll see if maybe next time. That's probably the best answer that you can give. So Janelle points out that there's always been a great separateness with Robin and her children would be scolded for just opening the refrigerator at Robin's house. And we've seen based off of that note uh, back in the early seasons in Vegas, you know, please ask Robin or Mindy before taking food. Also when Christine was, was that when she was in labor? And there was the whole picking up the kids and bringing them to Robin's house. And that when she yelled at Isabel, it's a snack, not a mill. Um, yeah, I, I would bet that that probably is pretty accurate. And she says that her kids weren't comfortable going over there. Mary said that when Robin came to the family, there was already a lot of tension and conflict because that's just what happens when someone new comes in. And Robin gives us her usual story. Mary was so super accepting of everybody, but the rest of the family, the rest of the family just could never, ever accept her and her kids. Listen, I am sure, absolutely sure, 100% sure that there were bumps along the way. 100%. But this has been such a permanent narrative that it didn't help those relationships. It has been for such a long time. They didn't accept us. They didn't accept us. There were bumps. They're, they don't treat them the same way. They're this, they're that. That's damaging to those relationships especially putting it out there on this show. Christine defends her kids, uh, pointing out that her kids didn't like going over there because they could see that Cody was in this special couple relationship with Robin, but behaved entirely differently in their home. And I can see that being uncomfortable. You know, why don't mom and us get the same treatment that the people over here are getting would be a very natural question that the kids would ask. And I am sure that Cody would not have accepted that question. Based off the way he reacts now, I am sure it would have been, this is misguided jealousy. What is your mom saying? All these aggressive things. Cody asserts that he and Christine were always romantic at her home and that they must have just forgotten about it. But I don't know if that's the case. He brings up a lot how he didn't love her and he wasn't attracted to her at different points during different episodes, which would mean that the romance he's talking about either wasn't there or probably didn't feel the same way he anticipated it did. Cody says that Robin coming into the family um, was not fraught with as much angst as 30 years ago. Of course, Janelle and Christine joining the family uh, had to be so much more difficult right? And it was difficult for years, so much worse than when Robin came in. His rose tinted glasses for 2010 would get cited for a legal tint. That's how strong they are. So he tells us this story about Ari saying she doesn't like Christine, to which he corrected her and said, you don't know her well enough to like her or not. And he goes on to say that, well, Ari said, well, she left dad and I don't like her. Of course, he sees this as loyalty rather than what I see it as poor parenting. Because you two keep insisting that the kids be left out of all of this. But it sure sounds like your youngest has a pretty good idea either of what's going on or how she's intended to feel about it. And he says that here's the dumb thing. I understand it and I tried to correct it, but that loyalty is happening elsewhere in the family too. Okay. Um... All right. She says, he says, he goes on to say that Ari is the youngest and she's a child and she should act like a child. And to insinuate that having feelings about the way that other kids perceive their treatment, your treatment of them is childish. That's childish in and of itself. All the kids should be afforded the right to express their feelings and set boundaries if Ari is allowed to, to do the same. Cody recounts an experience of trying to leave the house to go to Janelle specifically, and Ari melted down and refused to let him leave. He said that he told Robin, you're going to have to drag her off of me. But Robin said Ari's expressing herself, and Cody would have to give five minutes to, to Ari to let her do that. And he had to explain to his daughter that there's another mom, another wife, another family that needs him and other kids that need to see him. And he recounts that she wouldn't let go, and he just thought, golly, this is hard. Okay. Uh, I've been the kid that didn't want dad to go somewhere. See, 
I also have kids that don't want dad to go to work. And I know that this is different, right? That, that he's going to another family's house. But I have a parent that traveled for work for a long time. And I remember my mom explaining to all of us that everything was going to be fine. And that, yes, he might be gone for a couple of days, but he's going to be able to set a lot of his own schedule and make those days work for, for all of us. And he's not going to miss important things like he used to at his old job. And I try to do the exact same thing with my kids. Daddy has to go for a little while. And yes, he's going to get home from work after you're already asleep, but it's going to be okay. I'm here and I love you just as much as daddy does. So can you please come over here with me and we'll sit down. Daddy's going to go to work and help other people who need him just for a little bit. Okay. Robin can gentle parent without permissive parenting. In other words, the kids are allowed to express themselves, but they need to be taught to do it in a way that's healthy, not just for them, but healthy for other people around them too. Janelle shares how very different her experience with her kids was because those kids knew from the very beginning, dad is not always going to be here. Janelle felt like Cody and Robin really mismanaged the situation with her children, with Robin's children. Cody was never allowed to be away for more than three, four days because Ari would just get too sad. And she thinks this is poor parenting because all the other kids did it and they're well-adjusted adults. And I just think that there was not an appropriate expectation set for Robin's kids all the way from the beginning. It did seem like Robin demanded much of Cody's time and her kids did seem to feel more entitled to it. And I don't mean that in a rude way. Honest to goodness, I'm I'm going all the way back to when, when Robin said she needed an 11 day honeymoon. And she said something about needing that for the kids. She wanted a night in the rotation, even when other wives were uncomfortable. And she wanted more and more of Cody's time. And honestly, allowing Ari to scream and cry when Cody needs to go seems manipulative of Cody and harmful to Ariella. I mean, Ari's not going to learn anything from that other than a feeling of abandonment and hurt when he finally does go. If, instead of expressing herself, Robin had picked her up, comforted her, set an expectation for when Dad would be back, it would help her understand the dynamic a lot better and create less fear, less tension in her tiny little soul. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a professional in any sense. I'm just a kid who was so sensitive, who grew up to be pretty strong and still a little bit sensitive because of the people who are around me who help me set and manage my expectations. Robin justifies Ari loves her dad and wants to be around him, which is not the issue here. That's not the problem. She asked, did it ever stop Cody from going to another mom's house? No, because she wouldn't let it. It did affect his time away with Janelle, though, when they stopped at the B&B a couple seasons back, because I very distinctly remember him saying he needed to get home to Ari. I also think it may have been a mitigating factor in why he didn't go with Isabel either to her surgery or for her move. Robin says she's going through this mourning, this loss and grieving of some of her relationships, and she's experiencing situational depression because of it. I'm not here to pretend that she's not. Because I'm in no position for that. I mean, if I came on here and said, hey, guys, I'm experiencing some situational depression right now. And I don't know if that, I don't know what's going to happen. If I said that there are plenty of people who would be like, OK, Cozy, like we always see you pretty happy. Are you sure? I am sure. Yes. And I know it would be exceptionally hurtful for people to question me because the family is at odds. So. I'm sure she is sad and she very well may miss some of the family members. And I would if I were in her position too. Cody says that with time going on and a phone call every once in a while, the relationships will come back. I don't think the occasional phone call is ever going to be enough. Honest to goodness. Robin says it's not normal to see Cody smiling anymore these days uh, because of everything that's going on with the family. And that's actually genuinely sad to hear. I would not wish that on my worst enemy. And because so many people are affected and I can't be the one to decide whether or not somebody's sad based off of a television show, I'm willing to believe that, yeah, he probably is not the most pleasant person to live with it right now. So that is the first half of the episode. The second half, of course, is the the birth uh, part of the episode. And I will, uh, I will finish up filming that. It actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I know that I mentioned in a previous video that I really wasn't sure how that was going to go because I've had, you know, issues with my C-section in the past. It really wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I had my husband sit with me and watch it. And 
we did pretty okay. I think I cried once. So that'll be coming out soon. Um, I just really wanted to get this one out because I felt like this one actually had the most information and the most things to talk about. And I, I still stand by what I said. That game night did not feel genuine. It felt... I don't know if I felt like the producers were like, can you guys please do something together so we can film it? Or if they thought, hey, we need to do something because other people are doing stuff together or what the story was. But if it was if it was producer driven, you could kind of like feel it a little bit. Maybe other people didn't get that vibe. That's totally cool. And I'm not joking. Was it silver or glass? Because I'm telling you, I think that it's glass. <laughs> But a lot of people say it's silver and I feel like I'm going insane. <laughs> Maybe I am. I don't know. So that's all I got for you guys today. Um, yes, I will be back at it with part two here very shortly. And until then, bye.